Yeah, before beginning, let's all try. <coughs> Heavenly, merciful, and gracious Father, I thank you so much for saving us. Thanks to your grace, we gather here before your presence to study your words together. Day by day, we realized how weak we are. We fall many times. We are tempted by many sins in this world. Please teach us with your words tonight especially the life of King David. We know uh, we are likely to come many sins in our daily lives. <coughs> Please change our heart through this time. Please fill our heart with your love and grace at this moment. Please help all young adults to learn something important through the message of tonight. We commit everything into my hands from the beginning to the end. We pray it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <coughs> yeah. I'm really happy uh, to have you here. Uh, let's open the Bible. Second Samuel chapter, uh, third, uh, chapter uh, 11. Uh, Second Samuel uh, chapter 11. <coughs> You know the topic of tonight? Uh, don't you know that? The topic is repentance. Wow! Topic. <laughs> when I, when I, uh, and I listened to the topic uh, from the church, I was really amazed. Because uh, whenever uh, I have a kind of a fellowship with other sisters, with young adults, I was given this kind of topic. That's why, ah, uh, again? Okay. <laughs> Uh, Second Samuel chapter 11. <coughs> the topic of tonight, I think, is very, very important for our Christian life, right? Uh, Second Samuel uh, chapter 11, verse, uh, from verse 1 to 5. <coughs> Let me read for you. It happened in the spring of the year, at the time when kings go out to battle, and David sent Joab and his servants with him and all is right, all Israel, and they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rapha. But David remained at Jerusalem. Verse 2, Then it happened one evening that David arose uh, from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing. And the woman was very beautiful to behold. Verse 3, So David sent and in inquired about the woman. And someone said, Is this not uh, Bathsheba, the daughter of Elaim, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Verse 4 uh, and 5, two verses. Let us read together. 3 to 1. Then David sent messengers and took her, and she came to him, and lay, he lay with her, for he was cleansed before impurity. And she returned to her house. I am with a child. <coughs> as you know, tonight we are going to study about King David. As we know, King David is called the man after God's heart. It's the theme of uh, this uh, young other retreat. However, if people look at the life of King David, we can realize he committed sins. Although King David had a desire, had a strong desire to live for the Lord, unfortunately, he fell. He committed huge sins. As we know, right? What kind of sins did he commit? He committed what? Adultery and murder. Based on the Bible, based on Ten Commandments, as you know, committing an adultery, committing a murder is a big sin, right? Uh, but surprisingly, the man, the man of faith, King David, committed big mistakes before God. But we can comprehend, we must know that King David was the man of repentance. That's why eventually he was used by God so much. That is why he was called the man after God's heart. What about young adults? We are likely to fall. We are likely to commit many sins. Me too, right? Truth be told, I was saved when I was young. When I was 20s, I received salvation. 
Although I had a desire to be floored, uh, truth be told, I committed so many sins. Although I had a desire, it is very hard for me to stick to the cross, to love for love God all the time. But as we know, King David became a good example for all of us. Many times we fall. Many times we commit many sins, although we do not want. But don't forget, King David became the man after God's heart because he repented truly. If we follow that example, our Christian life will be successful. Based on the Bible, we can keep this in our heart. God uses the person who try to be perfect. Many people think God only, use, God only uses the man who is perfect. Is that true? God only uses those people who try to be perfect. It is the saying of the Bible. If we try to be perfect, if we try to avoid sins, if we try to repent our sins before the world, more often, God will surely use you for his glory. Please put a bookmark here. Let's open the Bible. Leviticus chapter 10. <clears throat> Please put a bookmark here. <clears throat> Leviticus chapter 10. Leviticus chapter 10. <clears throat> and verse 3. I envy you. <laughs> because uh, you're really energetic and passionate. That's why. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to 10, verse 3. You are younger than me, right? Uh, no? Physically, not spiritually, right? <laughs> I'm young. I am, although I look really young, I'm older than you. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> Leviticus chapter 10, uh, verse 3. Let us see together. Three, two, one. And Moses said to Aaron, This is what the Lord spoke, saying, By those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy. And before all the people, I must be glorified. So Aaron held his peace. The Bible says, By those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy. When we try to be near God, when you try to be closer to the Lord through our life, God's name will be glorified. His name will be lifted. That's why we have to fight against sins our, in our daily lives. We have to fight against sins. There are so many attacks, there are so many temptations in this world. But however, we have to fight against those. For what? For God. For God's glory. But it is way more important to avoid sins. As you know, this world is really corrupt. There are so many sins. We are exposed to many temptations. I know also uh, brothers are really handsome and sisters are really beautiful. That's why we are likely to fall because there are so many temptations around us. Unfortunately, King David fell. Why? Why did he commit sins? As you know, King David had a desire to live for God. King David had desire to live according to God's words. But although he intended, although he desired, he fell. Why? There are several reasons based on the scripture. If we learn that lesson, the lesson from the story of King David, we can avoid many sins and many mistakes in our life. Right? Let's get back to 2 Samuel chapter 11. <clears throat> if you are so sleepy, you can sleep. It's okay. I don't mind. Okay? Second Samuel chapter eleven. <clears throat> we are going to study the reasons that uh, King David committed sins, big sins, based on the scripture. What is the first reason? If we are like this, we are surely commit sins. What is the first reason that King David committed a sin? It's very, very important reason that we have to think about. Why? When are we likely to commit sins? When can he commit sins? Chapter 11, verse 2. 
rather sit together. Three turn, then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof on the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to behold. First of all, at the time, King David was really lazy. King David is uh, well known as a man of meditation. When he surrounded by many enemies, when he was chastened by his son Absalom, he woke up so early to meditate God's words. Meditating God's words became his habit. That's why he woke up so early to read the Bible, to pray. However, at the time, he woke up so late because he became so lazy. Laziness is, can cause us to commit so many sins. But surprisingly, sorry to say, many others are really sorry, so lazy. I saw this one, uh, one brother. Oh, brother, you do better wake up so early. Pastor, although I wake up so early, there's nothing that I have to do. Because we can be so lazy. Young adults need to possess a right life purpose. We need to think about why I have to live in this world. The more you possess the right purpose in your heart, the more diligent you can be. But surprisingly, unfortunately, many of others do not have their own dream. Their heart usually filled with many flesh desires. Oh, I really wish to do this. I really wish to do that. I really wish to be famous in this world. I really wish to be successful. But they do not think about right, right purpose in God. That's why they do not know why they have to be really diligent. Let me ask one question. You have a desire in God? Yes. Only four people. <laughs> what kind of desire do you possess? Nobody. What is your desire? Please, please raise your hand. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's correct, right? I, I, I will not ask, uh, I, I, I do not ask which church you come from, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Evangelism is our own life purpose. We need to focus on why we have to live in this world. As we know, there are so many stories who do not know the, the fact they are dying. We need to think about their eternal destiny. We need to think about our life purpose all the time. If so, we can be awakened, we can be more diligent. Let's open the Bible. First email, uh, so Psalm chapter 5. Psalm chapter 5. <coughs> Psalm chapter 5. <coughs> chapter 5, verse 3. Let me read for you. My voice you shall hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning I will direct it to you, and I will look up. So if you look at the background of this chapter, at the time, King David was surrounded by many enemies. He was at the verge of death. He was almost died. However, he woke up in the morning all the time. For what? To meditate God's words. Although there are so many sufferings, he was awakened spiritually because he woke up so early and he was really diligent. Let's open the Bible, Psalm chapter 143. <clears throat> 143, verse 8. <clears throat> 143, verse 8. Let us read together. 3, 1. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning, for in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Although his life was really busy, although he suffered a lot, he woke up all the time slowly. And then he became the man of meditation every morning. Because of his diligence, although he had many difficulties, he successfully overcame. And then he did not commit sins at the time. But surprisingly, when all the sufferings was, were gone, when he stayed in the palace, 
when everything was abundant, when he enjoyed his physical life, at the time, surprisingly, King David was tempted. King David committed sins. We have to keep this in heart. Young adults must be busier. Young adults must be more diligent. We have to endure more sufferings. We have to embrace more sufferings. It is the way to avoid temptations. Once your life becomes so, becomes so lazy, you're likely to commit so many sins. That's why we have to make our life more, much busier, more diligent. It is what we have to do. Let's open the Bible. First Peter chapter 4. <clears throat> First Peter chapter 4, verse 1. First Peter chapter 4, uh, uh, verse 1. Let me read for you. Let me read for you. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Verse 2, let us it together. Read one, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of man, but for the will of God. Especially at the time when this Bible was written, many born Christians had to suffer. At the time, uh, there are many persecutions of Roman Empire. Although there are many uh, persecutions, they were really awakened. Although they suffered a lot, they were spiritually awakened. Likewise, we have to suffer more for Christ. There are so many things that we have to do at the church. We have to do everything that we can. There are so many people that we have to evangelize. We have to do everything that we can. Although you are so busy, although there are many things that you have to do, Personally, you have to postpone those things. And then you have to make your life easier. Once you became so lazy, I'm just sure you will sin. These days, many people have so much time, right? Uh, so you have a vacation, right? Usually, during the vacation, many people tend to wake up so late. And they usually go to bed so late as well. Because of laziness, we are likely to commit Many sins, many sins. Let's open the Bible. Proverbs chapter 19. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 19, verse 15. Proverbs chapter 19, 15. Let me read for you. Laziness cast one into a deep sleep, and an idle person will suffer hunger. The Bible says, laziness cast one into a, into a deep sleep. If you are lazy, surprisingly, you will go to bed. You will sleep spiritually. You cannot be awakened. That's why we have to suffer more for God. We have to be more diligent in God. Unfortunately, when King David was so lazy, he was tempted. I'm so sure if your life is not that busy, you will, be you will be tempted as well. You will fall eventually. That's why we have to be more diligent. Am I right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We have to be more diligent. Chapter 21. <coughs> Twenty-one verse twenty-five. Let us sit together. 21, 25. Let's read together. Do it one. The desire of the lazy man kills him, and his hands refuse to labor. The desire of the lazy man kills what? Kills him. The desire of the lazy man kills him. That means because of our laziness, we can be dead spiritually. We can be worthless in God. Yes, so we have to make our life easier. But although we try to be busy, it is very hard, right? That's why, so when I was a young adult, uh, all the time I tried to uh, make the 
tourist every night, every night. Before going to bed, uh, to hospital, I kneel down before the Lord, and then I write down what I have to do the following day. It was really good for me to make my life um, much easier. Do you usually, do, do you usually make your tourist every day? You are not interested, right? <laughs> very, very important. We have to take all the steps to make our life easier, to make our life diligent. Because through you, God has a strong desire to evangelize more souls. God has a strong desire to bring more souls to God. But if you're lazy, God cannot do anything. Some people said, even Satan cannot use those people who are so lazy. If you're so lazy, you cannot be used, you cannot be used even by Satan. It is so, you, you must be really ashamed, right? Ashamed, <laughs> ashamed. Even Satan does not care about lazy men because automatically they can be excluded from God's work, right? To be used by God, we have to be more diligent. We have to walk, wake up earlier, we have to go to bed earlier. It is what you have to do. Okay? Yes. Please! Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> let's, get, let's get back to 2 Samuel chapter 11. Second Samuel chapter 11, verse 1. Are you sleepy? No. Oh, okay. I'm not the sleepy. <laughs> okay. Okay. If you're sleepy, please let me know. Right? <laughs> okay. Okay. You need a special training. Oh. <laughs> Sam Second Samuel chapter 11, verse 1. We are going to study the second reason why King David committed a sin. Chapter 11, verse 1. Let me read for you. It happened in the spring of the year at the time when kings go out to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rapa. Let's read together. Three turn. But David remained at Jerusalem. The second reason is his arrogance. Arrogance. He was really arrogant. Actually, when he was surrounded by many enemies, he tried his best to fight against his enemies. But surprisingly, God helped him. That's why he won the victory. But unfortunately, later on, he became so arrogant. He became so proud. Although many people went out to fight against enemies, he stayed at the palace. His heart became so arrogant. He lost Humility. That's why he fell. We must recognize how weak we are. It is humility. It is humbleness. Unfortunately, King David forgot how weak he was at the time. This is why he committed a sin. We must realize our weaknesses. We must understand how weak we are. If you realize weaknesses, you can rely on God more and more. You can stick to you, are, you can stick to God more, but once you become arrogant, you will pray, you will rely on God, and then you will commit sins. Let's open the Bible, Ezekiel chapter sixteen. Ezekiel chapter sixteen, verse forty-nine. Let me ask only one reason. As you know, let me ask one question. As you know, the cities, Sodom and Gomorrah, were really notorious, right? The people in Sodom and Gomorrah committed many sins, especially sexual immoralities. You know the reason? Why did they commit many sins? The Bible has an answer. Ezekiel chapter 16. Sixteen forty nine. Sixteen forty nine. Let me read for you. Look, this was the iniquity of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had what? Pride. 
fullness of food and abundance of idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. The Bible says, she and her daughter had pride. They were really arrogant. They did not understand how weak they are. This is why they committed sins. They fell into the temptation. Likewise, we must understand our weaknesses. We are so weak. Me too. All of us are really weak. If we truly understand our weaknesses, we try to be humble. We try to kneel down more before God. However, those people who are really arrogant do not pray. They do not pray to the Lord. At any time, we, we can fall. Even King David committed sins. What about Samson? He also committed sins because of their weaknesses. All, all of us are really weak. But there are some people who are really arrogant in their faith. Wow, I grew up in the church. I read the Bible all the time. I prayed a lot. I saw the Lord like this. That's why, oh, I will not fall. Who can boast their tomorrow? Those people who think they are stand, they will fall. That's why we have to be awakened. We must understand our weaknesses. Even Apostle Paul realized his weaknesses. This is why he prayed. Prayed. Let's open the Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. Chapter 12, verse 7. Let me read for you. And last, I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations. A throne in the flesh was given to me. A messenger of Satan buffeted me, lest I be exalted above measure. Verse 8. Let's read together. Read one. Concerning this thing, I pled with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. Even Apostle Paul prayed to God three times because of his weaknesses. Through his prayer, God actually protected him from committing many mistakes. Even Apostle Paul prayed continuously for his own weaknesses. What about us? We are weaker. We have more weaknesses. We have to realize. What about your faith? Your faith is stronger than Apostle Paul? Yeah, absolutely not. That's why we have to pray more and more. Unfortunately, at the time when King David committed sins, he did not realize his weaknesses. That's why he became so proud. That's why he was really arrogant. At the time, Satan attacked him. Eventually, he committed sins. We can make the same mistake. Especially young adults need to be humble. We have to keep the low profile before the Lord all the time. First Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5. Verse 5. Let us say together. Three, two, one. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Verse 6. Let's read together once again. Three, two, one. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. He may exalt you in due time. Especially, it is exaltation towards Young people. Young people can be arrogant. Young people can be proud. Why? We have energy. And then we have many talents. That's why we can be really arrogant. We have to be really careful. We have to really watch for not to be arrogant before the Lord. I don't know. We have weaknesses. But each person has their own weaknesses. I don't know. What kind of weaknesses you have? Some people have weaknesses on the opposite sex. Wow, wow. Opposite sex can be a weakness. 
Our policies can be our own God, our own idol. Oh, my life purpose is getting married to a good person, handsome guy, beautiful sister. It is my life purpose. It can be our own God or it can be our own, own idol. It can be our own weakness. Or for some people, make, making money, money can be a weakness. Oh, I really wish to, I really wish to be rich. I really wish to wish, wish by new car, good houses like this. To some people, fame and success. What about your weaknesses? We must realize our own weaknesses and that we need to pray. If you know your weaknesses, we have to pray continuously. What about Apostle Paul? He even prayed for his weaknesses three times, three times. What about us? How many times should we pray for our weaknesses? We have to pray for our weaknesses every day, every moment. Otherwise, we can fall eventually. Truth be told, because so when I was saved, there are so many bro brothers around me, and there are so many sisters as well. So we got together, and we had a good fellowship. But as time went by, unfortunately, many brothers and sisters actually left the church because of their weaknesses. Some sisters followed something. Something, something, something. What is something? Handsome guys, handsome guys. Really? And some brothers actually depart from the church because of fame and money. I saw many cases. Since I received salvation, I have watched many cases who depart from the church because of their weaknesses. Oh, I was really surprised. Let me give you an example. And I, when I was 20s, at the time I was younger, as I said, I was more handsome <laughs> than now. Oh, I'm aging. Oh. I feel really sorry for that. <laughs> so at the church, I met many sisters. But I actually, at the time, I knew one sister who looked really, really faith faithful. Wow. Whenever she uh, shared her testimony, I usually touch it. Wow. She's really faithful. Wow. Wow. She's kind of a role model to me. Wow. I need to follow that example. Oh, I'm a sister. I commit so many sins, but I try to live in this world for God. Oh, like this. Oh, I was really touched. Wow. She's really faithful. Oh, good. But, but, <laughs> but, but, in Seoul, the capital of Korea, I went somewhere to meet newly born again Christians. But on the street, I met her. I was surprised. But she was next to a guy, a guy. <laughs> they were dating. But he, he's not born again Christian. I couldn't believe my eyes. What did I see? What did I see? <laughs> Although she looks, she looks so faithful at the church, his, her life was totally different out of the outside the church. She was dating, dating. <laughs> wow. So I was really so shocked to see that. Our life can be like that. So according to my observation, all of you looks very, very face, faithful. Wow. Uh, I think you're so beautiful. You are, looks really decent. You're so very uh, like this. But I know some of you have different heart. We have to be honest before we God desires what? Truth all the time. Many people's life are different. The life in the church and outside the church. Why? They did not know how weak they are. They tried to be pretentious. They deceived God. They deceived other brothers and sisters. Although they commit so many sins in their lives, 
they try to be, they try to look really faithful at the church. It actually happens even in our church. I've been here in the stage for four years. Can I share my testimony? Yes. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Because <laughs> when people were coming to states, I consider, especially young adults, brothers and sisters in the states are more mature than brothers and sisters in Korea. Truly. But for four years, I realized brothers and sisters in the states can be weaker, are really weak in faith. Right? <laughs> we need, but unfortunately, many people, many people do not realize the weaknesses. We must comprehend how weak we are. Because compared to Korea, the surrounding for faith, for Christian life, Christian life is not that good here. That's why we are exposed to many temptations, many sins. That's why we have to pray to the Lord more. We have to rely on God more and more. But many people do not rely on God. That's why they commit so many sins. The more you realize your weaknesses, the more time you have to pray. You have to confess your weaknesses to God every day, every moment. God, I'm so weak. Let's open the Bible. Psalm chapter 50, uh, 62. <coughs> Oh, okay, I, I forgot. So I promised to you to share my testimony, right? <laughs> oh. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, oh. Sorry, sorry. When I was 23, I received salvation mm, at the time. But for the first time, uh, so I did not enjoy having fellowship with other sisters. But later on, uh, through God's help, I had a desire to live for God. But unfortunately, many days, I realized I fell. After having fellowship with brothers and sisters, my heart was filled with the desire, burning heart. Wow, ah, I can die for God right now. But in reality, in my room, in my house, truth be told, I was tempted by many things, internet or other things like this, televisions and other things. I hated this kind of thought. That's why. I did like this. Before uh, coming to my house, I ran a lot at the park at 2 a.m., 1 a.m., I ran for one hour and two hours. And then I, when I was totally exhausted, I came back to my house because I did not want to commit sins late night. Right after coming back to my house, after taking a shower, I fell asleep. But although I did like this, I even committed many sins. I consider all of you uh, can make the same mistake. Am I right? Yes. That's why uh, we have to rely on God more. We have to take many actions to avoid sins. As I told you, God uses the person who try to be perfect, who try to avoid sins. If you try to fight against sins, you can be used by God. We have to do everything to be holier, to become the man after God's heart. Why did Jesus Christ die on the cross? For our sins. It is kind of fundamental things that we have to remember all the time. Why did he die on the cross? For my sins, for our infirmities. We must realize our weaknesses. Psalm chapter 62. <coughs> Verse 3. Verse 3. Let us sit together. Return. How long will you attack a man? You shall be slain, all of you, like a leaning wall and a tottering fence. It is confession of King David. King David realized his weaknesses. He said, he's like a leaning wall. He's like a tottering fence. What about us? We are weaker. We are like, we are like tottering fence. We are like a leaning wall. 
That's why we have to pray a lot. We have to pray more for our own weaknesses. Let me ask one question. What kind of weaknesses you have? What is your weakness? Please put your hands up, right? Number one. God desires truth, right? Truth. <laughs> Number one. Uh, multiple choices, right? Uh, before asking, I'll let you know uh, the choices. Number one is opposite sex. Number two, money. Number three, fame. Number four, uh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, multiple choice. Number one, opposite sex. <laughs> liar, 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 you're a liar, liar. <laughs> number one, number one. Okay, wow. Uh, liars, uh, liars. <laughs> number two, <laughs> number two, number two. Number what is number two? Uh, money, 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 money. Uh, number three, fame, fame. Number four, everything. Okay, okay. Thank you for your honesty. Okay, you deserve to uh, to do something for the Lord, right? <laughs> and now, so King David even realized his weaknesses. That is why he prayed to the Lord all the time. We also need to realize our weaknesses, and then we can pray to the Lord, we can rely on God more. What about other things? Let's get back to 2 Samuel <coughs> chapter 11. <coughs> chapter 11. <coughs> Verse 2. Let me read for you. Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing. And the, man, the woman was very beautiful to behold. The third one is he failed to control his own flesh desire. For the first time, he saw a Sheba taking a bath. And then she, he continued watching the lady continuously. If you gaze at something continuously, you can be tempted. Unfortunately, King David failed to control his carnal desire, flight desire. We have to control our desire. At the Garden Eden, at the Garden of Eden, Eve saw the forbidden fruit. That's why her heart was really tempted. We have to control our evil and sinful desire in our heart. Although you have a desire to something, we have to control that. Especially, you have to control what? Your eyes. Some of you uh, have weaknesses regarding the upper sex. If you gaze at, sorry, Brothers, if you gaze a certain sister continuously, you can be tempted. Am I right? Sorry. If you gaze a certain woman, not sisters, woman, you can be tempted. Wow. Let me ask one question. Was Bathsheba was really beautiful? I don't know. Nobody knows. But when David gazed at her continuously, her heart started to be tempted. Wow. For the first time, mm. She's not beautiful. Second time, oh, third time, oh, like this. <laughs> <laughs> really, really. What about sisters? Oh, for the first time, you, when you gaze at a man, a certain man, in the world or in the church, hmm. Oh, oh, Facebook, like, like it happened, like, it can happen. Oh. Oh, mm, for the first time, mm, he's nothing but, oh, he, second time, oh, he's really attractive. The third time, oh, very baseball, like, like it happens. <laughs> really? That's why you have to control our desire. If you have a desire to look at a certain man or certain woman, please cover your eyes. <laughs> it is needed. When you, when you discover uh, a woman or a man very attractive, please close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's needed. Otherwise, you can fall. Really? 
these days, social media is really famous, popular. There are some sisters and brothers who have a look at a certain man, a certain woman's social media often. Oh, she's, she went to the beach. Uh, she like this. Aha, uh -huh. brothers, okay? <laughs> sisters. Oh, oh, he likes this. Oh, he is going to fit the knees. He, uh, uh, oh, that's why he's the most cute. <laughs> it happens, it happens. If you look at something continuously, you can be tempted. Am I right? Sure. If you think something continuously, you are likely to commit sins easily. I don't know how beautiful Bathsheba was, but when King David gazed at her continuously, he eventually committed a mistake. The life of King David can be a good example for all of us. We are weaker. That's why we can commit the same mistake. Let's open the Bible. <coughs> Psalm chapter 101. <coughs> can I ask a big favor? No? Sorry, if you say no, okay. Uh, if you say no, I, I will just say, uh, let's pray together. That's it, okay? Question, so it's not that good to make a phone call to a certain uh, brother or certain sister, right? It's not that good to make a phone call to the opposite sex personally. Please do not give a text to a certain, a certain person. It's not that proper, especially the opposite sex, right? According to my observation, Many brothers and sisters do like this. If you receive the text, the person you like, it is fine. Okay, okay, okay. But if you receive the text from the person that you don't like, many people go to the pastor. Pastor, I received the text from, from this brother. <laughs> Sorry. Psalm chapter 1. It is my favorite, right? Okay. Uh, chapter 1, verse one. <coughs> verse 3. <coughs> verse 2. <coughs> Let me read for you. I will behave. Chapter 1, one verse 2. I behave wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when you, will you, when will you come to me? I will walk with my house with a perfect heart. Actually, when he took the throne, King David tried to maintain his heart before the Lord. That's why he tried to behave with a perfect heart before the Lord. That's why he did like this. Verse 3. Let us hear together. Three, two, one. I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. Sins usually come to you when you accept. But if you deny, if you reject the temptation, the sins will not come to you. We are likely to commit sins when you accept, when you hold. It depends on your choice. Please do not make any excuses before the Lord. Sins can be done by your own choices. That's why we can control our heart like King David. For the first time when he took a throne, his heart was really perfect. However, when he became arrogant, he committed sins. What about Job? Let's open the Bible. Job chapter 31. <coughs> Job chapter 31, verse 1. <clears throat> chapter 31, verse 1. Let us, Job chapter 31, verse 1. Let us see together. 3, 2, 1. 
I have made a covenant with my eyes. Why then should I look upon a young woman? We have to make a covenant before God. I love you because you love me. That's why I made a covenant before you. I will not gaze at other men or other women before getting married. It is needed. We have to make a covenant. We also need to make a covenant, God. I have, a, I have a weakness in my heart. It is about the money or fame of the world. I will not gaze, I will not gaze at those things in my life. My life belongs to you. God, please help me. If you pray like this, God will surely guide you in the right path. God will surely protect your heart from many temptations of the world. But if we are so arrogant, I'm so sure we will pray. And then you'll be tempted. Don't forget, our heart has many curiosities and carnal desires. You know the story of Din uh, Dina? You know Dina? Dina was a daughter of King, uh, was, uh, was a daughter of Jacob, Jacob. No, Pastor Jacob. <laughs> Jacob, Jacob. <laughs> so actually, uh, Dina was raised in the family of faith. But one day, when they stayed in Shechem, Dina had a curiosity to know about the life of their land. And he went inside the land. Unfortunately, Dina was what? Was violated. She was actually raped. If you possess improper curiosities in your heart, you surely fall. Oh, if I meet boyfriend, what, what did happen to my life? What about the feeling to having a, having a boyfriend? Let me try. Uh, if I have a girlfriend, uh, what about the feeling? I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> no good, right? Oh, if I make more money, oh, what should I do then? Like this. God has to be our top priority all the time. Because Jesus Christ died on the cross, he gave away everything for us. It is a sin to love other things other than God. It is idol idolatry. It is idol worshiping. It is not proper before Lord. We have to love God only, right? For that, we have to decide. We have to make up our mind. Jesus Christ is my eternal wife. Jesus Christ is my eternal husband. Am I right? Okay. I know you have to get married, but we need to think about our priority. Who can die for you? We know that he died on the cross for our sins. That's why we have to realize our weaknesses. We have to think about the importance of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ must be our priority. Unfortunately, who? King David was really arrogant. That's why he committed a sin. We have to be humble before the Lord to keep our heart. We must realize our weaknesses. Although you look really young, you look really energetic, really some brothers look very muscular, but not me, not me. No muscle. <laughs> but we must realize we are so weak. That's why we have to be humble. We have to rely on God. God, help me. Guide me. I'm so weak. Please help me all the time. Let's open the Bible. Hebrews chapter 4. Chapter 4, 15. <clears throat> Let me read for you. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Verse 16. Let's read together. Three, two, one. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. 
if we know our weaknesses, we can go to God more to receive God's help. We have to kneel down, we have to pray to the Lord for our own weaknesses. If we know how weak you, you are, you will not commit sins easily. We can overcome many temptations because God will be your protector. God will be your help, right? We have to kneel down, we have to realize our weaknesses before the Lord. Unfortunately, King David committed sins. First of all, he was really what? Lazy. Because of his radiance, he committed sins. And then he was really what? Actually, he was really arrogant. That's why he committed <coughs> sins. Unfortunately, also, he did not control his desire. Because of three major reasons, he committed sins. Likewise, if we fail to control ourselves, if we are really arrogant, we can commit sins as well. But as we know, King David is, uh, King David is called the man after God's heart because he successfully repented his sins before the Lord. God loves those people who are really repentant before the Lord. God loves those people who try to be near God. Actually, King David became an exemplary person to us, right? Let's read the Bible. Psalm chapter 64, uh, 38 first, 38 first. Psalm chapter 38. Thirty-eight. Uh, so as I suggested, uh, so please do not make a phone call to the opposite sex, right? Or please do not give or give the text uh, to the opposite sex as well. Uh, if you receive something uh, from the opposite sex, uh, please report it to the pastor, right? Do you know my cell phone number? Three two three three five. <laughs> 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 Or, uh, if possible, please, have a, please do not have a look at social media of the upper sex. Please do not have any concern about their private and personal life. It's not that good. It can destroy your Christian life. Okay? Can you promise? If you promise, please raise your hand. Put your hands up. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Although receive the text from the person that you like, okay, <laughs> please report it to the police. Uh, to the police, no. <laughs> 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 uh, to the pastor, right? <laughs> uh, church is like a first station, right? <laughs> you can, okay, okay. Uh, no police, right? You can be arrested. You can be arrested, right? <laughs> it's not the will of God. Okay. Psalm chapter thirty-eight. <laughs> Thirty-eight, verse two. Ah, one more request, one more. Ah, sorry. <coughs> Sometimes uh, brothers and sisters can uh, stay together, right? Uh, inevitably, right? Especially when a brother give a right to a sister, uh, please do not ask her to sit next to you, right? She has to sit the back seat, right? Back seat. It's not the proper to sit next to a brother. It's not that good. We can be tempted because. The distance between you can be really close. Oh. Where are we going? Oh, oh no, I'm <laughs> uh, Okay, so please use spacious seat, right? Back seat, right? Uh, you can stay there, right? Like this. Please do not uh, sit next to uh, the upper side. It's not that good. Okay? Thank you for your cooperation. Okay. <laughs> 38. <coughs> Verse 2, 38, verse 2, <coughs> and 3. Let me read for you. <coughs> For your arrows pierce me deeply, and your hand presses me down. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your anger, nor your any health in my bones because of my sin. Verse 4, let's read together. Read one. For my iniquities have gone over my head. Like a heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. 
Unfortunately, after coming sins, King David was chastened by God. Because of God's chastisement, he lost his peace in his heart, right? Likewise, if you commit sins, you will lose the peace given by the Lord. There's no joy, no peace in our heart. That's why we have to be separate from sins. But as you know, King David was the man of repentance because he was really humble. Especially one prophet, Nathan, came to King David. He actually confessed his sins. Let's look at the Bible, 2 Samuel chapter 12. <coughs> <coughs> Second Samuel chapter twelve verse seven. Let me read for you. Then Nathan said to David, "You are the man." Thus says the Lord God of Israel, "I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul." Nathan came to say, came to David and said, "You are the man." At the time, King David realized his sins were actually revealed before the Lord. At the time, he did not try to hide his sins before God. We have to keep this in the heart. Don't forget, all sins will be revealed at the church. After coming your sins, although you try to hide your sins, it is impossible. You know the reason? Why? Why all sins will be revealed at the church? You know the reason? Because in the church, there is God. Surely. That's why nobody can hide their own sins. You can deceive other persons. But eventually, all sins will, surely, will be surely revealed. And you will be really ashamed. That's why if you commit sins, you do better confess. Let's open the Bible. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 10, verse 21. Chapter 10, verse 21. Let us read together. Three, two, one. And having a high priest of a house of God. Surprisingly, at the church, there is God's dwelling. There is God's movement. It is why all sins will be revealed before God's presence. Verse 22, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. The Bible says, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. Surprisingly, if you possess evil things in your heart, those things will be revealed. God can see, God can see everything in your life. That's why nobody can hide their own sins. If you look at Exodus, Moses tried to commit a sin. He tried to kill somebody. At the time, he had a look at this side and the side. But he thought, oh, nobody is watching over me. And then he committed a sin. But eventually his sins were already were also revealed. Why? God was watching over him from above. Now, God is watching over you. God knows everything about your life. That's why nobody can hide your sins. Let's read the Bible, Psalm chapter 37. <coughs> Eighteen. Seventeen, first seventeen. Sorry, seven, verse seventeen. Let me read for you. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, and the, but the Lord upholds 
the righteous. Verse 18. Let us read together. Read one. The Lord knows the days of the upright, and the inheritance shall be forever. The Bible says, the Lord knows the days of the upright. We are the, we are the righteous before the Lord. But surprise, the Bible says, the Lord knows the days of upright. That means God knows everything about born-again Christians. Your life will be, your life is monitored by God. There is a CCTV. Many says TV. That's why nobody can hide their own sins. When Nathan came to David, David realized his sins were actually revealed before God. He realized his sins cannot be hidden. Likewise, your sins cannot be hidden by you. That's why you do better confess your sins before the Lord. God, please help me. King David committed sins, but he nailed down before the Lord. Eventually, he became the man of, man, he became the man after God's heart. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. 13. 4, 13. Let us see together. Do it one. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked, open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. It is saying, O oh God. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, and all things, all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. God knows everything. We will be naked before the Lord. Nobody can hide themselves. That's why we have to be honest before the Lord. I know we can commit sins, right? Because of our weaknesses. But like King David, we have to be honest. We have to confess our mistakes, our sin before the Lord. God, although you died for me, although I'm a Christian, I committed that sin. Please help me. If you confess like this sincerely, God will surely help you. God will surely restore your heart. We have to repent our sins. If you possess something wrong in your heart, wrong in your heart, through this retreat, we have to remove. We have to abandon everything. If you have a bad habit, you have to forsake it. You have to make a decision. You have to decide. God, I will not commit sins continuously. Please help me. I will not avoid those sins. I will not, I will, I really wish to abandon those sins. Please help me. Please pray on your own. If so, God will surely help you. Based on the Bible, what is true repentance? The repentance of King David was really true. That's why God accepted the prior of a confession of King David. Let's open the Bible. First King chapter 1. First King chapter 1. <coughs> First King chapter one, verse four. First King chapter one, verse four. Uh, let me read for you. Okay. The young woman was very lovely, and she cured for the king and served him. But let's read together. Read one. But the king did not know her. When he was old, God allowed a certain, a certain woman to serve him because King David was really old. He was allowed to stay with a young lady. But the Bible says the king did not know her. It is true repentance. True repentance means not committing sins continuously. If you repent tr truly, that means you will not commit sins continuously. Although you say, oh, I repent my sins, although, I, although you say, I repent my sins, I confess my sins, if you repeat, your confession is a lie. 
Let's open the Bible. Proverbs chapter 22. 28 first. Proverbs chapter 28. 28, 13. Twenty-eight, thirteen. Let us sit together. Three, two, one. He who covers his sins will be not prosper, but whoever confesses the first six, then will have mercy. Right? The Bible says, but whoever confesses in first six, then will have a mercy. What is true repentance? First of all, you have to confess, and then you have to forsake. It is true repentance. Let's read the Bible. Proverbs chapter 16. Sixteen verse six. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter sixteen verse six. Let's read together. Three, two, one. In mercy and truth unopened is provided for iniquity, but by the fear of the Lord one departs from evil. The Bible says, in mercy and truth, atonement is provided for iniquity. And by the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. The more you love God, the, the more you feel the Lord, you can be separated from sins. You can depart from sins. Do you love God? Do you love Jesus Christ? How much do you love Him? Jesus Christ is all our everything. We have to love God with all our heart because of the love that we have in our heart we have to avoid sins. We have to depart from sins because He loved us and we love God. When sins come into your heart you will be useless. You cannot do anything for God. True repentance means forsaking improper things out of your heart, out of your life. Who knows your sins so well? First of all, God knows. And then you know that, right? If you know your sins, improper things in life, please abandon those. Please remove everything from your heart. If there is a hindrance between you and God, please remove those things. If there are something improper between you and God, please remove those things. It is what you have to do. Actually, King David was the man of repentance. God accepted his repentance. That's why King David was used by God continuously. King David defeated the enemies continuously because God helped him. Let's open the Bible. Second Samuel chapter 12. I will make it short. Okay? Oh, we are going to end soon. Okay? Don't worry about it. Okay? <laughs> Second Samuel I heard, so the schedule today is really hectic, right? <coughs> That's why I heard, so most of you are really sleepy and tired. I heard about it. Am I correct? No. <laughs> <laughs> but although you say no, but your <laughs> eyes tell different. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> Second Samuel chapter 29. Second Samuel chapter 12, verse 29. Second Samuel chapter 12, verse 29. So they be gathered all the people together and went to Rapha, fought against it, and took it. Then he took their king's crown from his, he from his head, 
Its weight was a talent of gold uh, with precious stones, and it was set on David's head. Let's read together. Which one? And he brought out the spoil of the cities in great abundance. Surprisingly, when he truly repented, God gave him the victory. Victory. Because he tried to be perfect before the world. Although he committed sins, he truly repented. And he tried to be perfect before the world. That's why he became the man after God's heart. On top of that, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 24. 24. Let me read for you. Then David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and went in to her and lay with her. So he bore, she bore a son, and he called his name Solomon. Now the Lord loved him. Verse 25. Let us sit together. Do it one. And he, he sent word by the hand of Nathan, the prophet. So he called his name Jedidiah because of the Lord. Now, although uh, because, of, uh, because of chastisement of God, the son of King David actually died. But after having true repentance, God allowed King David to have, have another son. The son's name is Solomon. But he has another name. It is Jedidiah. That means God loves. God loves. That means through his repentance, he was loved by God again. Although King David committed sins, through repentance, his heart was actually restored. He started to, live, started to be loved by God again. Likewise, although we commit sins, although we are so weak, when we confess our sins, when we abandon our sins from our life, we will be loved, guy, loved by God. And we can be used by God again. That's why in our daily life, life, true repentance is really important. Let's get back to uh, let's open your Bible, Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13, verse 22. 13, 22. It is uh, a theme, right? of this uh, Young Adult Retreat, 13.22. Let us sit together. Three, two, one. And when he had removed him, and he raised up for them David as king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. King David became the man after God's heart. Although because of his laziness, because of his arrogance, he committed sins. He committed huge sins before the world. And even he lost his self-control. That is why he gazed at a woman continuously. That is why he committed a sin. But he repented. Through his repentance, God gave him the victory. Right? And then he was loved by God continuously. That is why he became the right man before the world. We have to be another David. Am I right? No, you have to be another, another David. That's why the story of David is written in the Bible. Although we are so weak, although we commit many sins in our daily lives, we have to confess. We have to be the man of repentance. If so, God will surely use you for his glory, for his kingdom. Let's pray. Heavenly, merciful, and gracious Father, thank you so much for giving us this precious time. Please help all young adults uh, to be separate from worldly temptations and worldly sins. We are so weak. We are so ignorant before you. Please protect us from many temptations of the world. Please guard us against many sins. We know we commit so many sins. We have committed so many sins every day. Uh, please help us to be holier. Please help us to be prepared before you to live for your glory. We commit everything in your in my hands. We pray it 
in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you. Uh, real quick, I'll try to make it as quick as possible for you guys to uh, get along with uh, your groups and also with your churches. Um, so as of right now, you know, thanks to the past, we ended the sermon a little bit early for our tour, so we're, we're on track. Uh, so please, you know, as Pastor mentioned today, you guys can take the time to think about and repent for the things that we've been committing in our uh, uh, daily lives. Uh, that you guys can prepare for the public tonight, and you guys can prepare for the prayer time tonight. And please have that in your minds and kind of think about it and how we have to do. But uh, have a contrite spirit before God and possess the right heart before God. Um, the prayer time is going to start in 30 minutes. You guys right now have about 50 minutes to prepare. Uh, you know, as you guys know, every year the praise night we extend it by like an hour because just the, the, the churches are growing. There's so much more things to be done. So I want to be prompt. So as soon as the announcements are over, do your thing, change, uh, talk to your group leader, your young book leader, you know, do your final minute adjustments from here and there. And please be ready in the main hall by 8.30, 8.30. Um, please. Try to refrain from doing like a full blown out practice. And you know, I know you guys have been kind of doing that a little bit and uh, kind of shutting people off. Please try to refrain from that. I know I apologize because of the time constraints. You guys didn't actually get a time this year. But we'll try to make adjustments for that next year. Now another important announcement is after free time is over, we're trying to hopefully finish by 10.30 before 11. Um, but there's gonna be late night snacks that's gonna be provided. But uh, the late night snacks, uh, it is an open fellowship, but because we didn't actually get an opportunity to have fellowship after the outdoor evangelism, I do wanna kinda unofficially say it out there for you guys to have fellowship in groups. If you're extremely tired and you guys really need to go to bed, that's up to you, no one's gonna force you, but I feel like for the most part, a lot of you guys are gonna want and desire to have fellowship. So if, you're, if that's gonna be the case, please find a room with your groups or with, you know, the members of your groups to have fellowship like that and discuss about the outcome and the results and some of the do's and don'ts of the outdoor evangelism that you guys have been doing. I've heard some good things. I've heard some disheartening things, but I know that even though you guys hear disheartening things, you guys will not be discouraged and that it'll just make you stronger. So I think when we share those ideas and when we share those experiences, that will really benefit the rest of the brothers and sisters. In the meantime, the only other excusable thing from that group fellowship you're not gonna be joining is just counseling. Uh, we do have a counseling session that we had last night and today. If you guys feel like you guys need to have counseling with your pastor, if you guys don't want to have counseling with your own pastor, uh, and you guys want to have counseling from second opinion, that's fine. That's up to you. The counseling sheet's uh, up on the registration on the second floor in front of that. Please write it down. Submit it to me, myself, or Brother Raymond, or Sister Alice, Sister Ruth, or Sister Kelly. We are more than happy to uh, appreciate that, and then we'll go ahead and organize the counseling for you guys after the praise night. Um, breakfast tomorrow is going to be arranged by LA Church, Corona Church, Sacramento Church, Seattle Church, and Hawaii Church. Sisters, I know there was a little bit of an issue today because of the delay, so if you guys can just get up on time. We gave you 30 more, 30 more minutes to sleep tomorrow morning because we know that the fellowship is going to be extended today. So the <coughs> breakfast is going to start tomorrow at uh, 8 o'clock. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, 9 o'clock. So get up at 8, wash up, and finish up by 9. We're going to start eating and having meditation by 9 o'clock. And I'll post for you guys the meditation topic that we have. So the brothers and sisters of LA Church, Corona Church, Sacramento, Seattle, and Hawaii, please keep that in mind. Sisters can help prepare. Brothers will serve like uh, Vegas did an excellent job today and also clean up and everything like that. Uh, one other thing is we have also an offering box that we're going to prepare for us. Uh, it's going to be displayed tomorrow. Offering box is going to be for our West Coast.